Okay, we're just about to start the scenario, the simulation. Uh, patient has been brought in the, the hab, has been installed in the surgical table. All the monitoring equipment is in place and you can see that unfortunately his blood pressure is really low because he lost a, a lot of blood and he's deconditioned by um, lower gravity. So Joseph here is just about to start the flow chart and f the first step is to decide which is the best uh, general anesthesia for this scenario. So here's, he knows that the, the injured part is the abdominal so he's just clicking on the abdominal uh, region and then uh, obviously because here it's a situation of uh, abdominal injury he is um, clicking on uh, GA with ETI which is under tracheal intubation so now um, he's gonna have to go through all different steps of this uh, general anesthesia protocol and the first step is to do the checklist we need to uh, make sure we have all the different equipment here so uh, oxygen system suction operating light, vital signs monitor, and surgical table. Obviously all this uh, is in place. Then we need to make sure all the drugs are ready. So this, is, um, this has been previously prepared and the drugs are here uh, on the plate, ready to be injected. Then um, we need to make sure the monitoring and emergency equipment is, is ready. So this uh, has been done previously and uh, everything is in place close to the head of the operator and um, the medical history form and the patient anesthesia record are also available. Going through the next step uh, it's the IV line placement. In our case uh, it's already been done and we're just starting the, the IV fluid administration. L Going back to the scenario, Joseph is going to have to decide what volume he needs to administer to the injured patient. So because the patient has lost approximately a liter, uh, Joseph starts giving him IV fluids um, in the same volume. And we'll see that uh, this will hopefully um, restore a good hemodynamic status. At the same time, in the simulation, I'm going to input this volume of IV fluid to one liter and we'll see in real time the hemodynamic response. So thanks to the IV fluid, blood pressure is restored to a normal value. The next step of the simulation is going to be pre-oxygenation. So um, the participant is required to give the astronaut some oxygen, in this case with a non-rebreather mask. And then he's going to have to um, leave the mask for at least three minutes in order to um, give enough oxygen to the patient before the induction. And while the mannequin is receiving oxygen at the same time on the simulator, I'm going to select non-rebreather mask and then set the FiO2 to 100%. The next step of the protocol is the actual induction of general anesthesia and now the participant is going to have to inject all four drugs corresponding to the induction. So he starts with uh, atropine. Then he gives midazolam. And at the same time, on the software, I'm going to put. I'm going to inject the same drugs to the simulated astronaut. So, midazolam, 2.5 milligrams, and then ketamine, 
to milligrams per kilogram. And then finally the muscle blocker. So while Joseph is injecting to the mannequin, we can see the, the drugs are starting to take effect and we're expecting the respiratory rate to drop to zero really soon corresponding to the effect of the muscle blocker. Here we are. So while he injected everything accordingly, now the patient is anesthetized and needs to be intubated, which is the next step. The next step corresponds to the endotracheal intubation and to that purpose there is another video in the PowerPoint explaining this procedure is somewhat complex. So the participant is just reviewing the video before attempting the procedure. So he's trying after reviewing the video. And it's a difficult procedure really because the the learning curve studies show that you need around 60 procedures to reach a 90% success rate in this procedure. Is it in place? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time to test the intubation. So now that the mannequin is intubated here on the simulator I'm just choosing the intubation 100% oxygen and I need to emulate the mechanical ventilation so I'm gonna set here the respiratory rate to let's say 16 per minute and the tidal volume to let's say 500 milliliters So now the patient is actually breathing, or ventilated rather. He is stable, he's ventilated, and he's ready to undertake the surgery. So now let's pretend that the surgery is over. Uh, the patient is still stable, uh, he's not bleeding anymore and it's time to uh, reverse the effect of the muscle blockers because in this protocol we've been uh, re-injecting um, rocuronium every so often just to uh, keep the anesthesia uh, optimal so uh, let's reverse the anesthesia by injecting some Sugamadex and at the same time on the simulator I'm going to reverse the muscle blocker effect by putting the NMB which is um, neuromuscular blockade to zero while the participant is injecting the Sugamadex. So the final step of uh, the procedure is to extubate the patient uh, so the participant is going to have to check for uh, the spontaneous ventilation so we see that he's actually breathing. On the simulator, now that we re reversed the effect of the muscle blocker, the respiratory rate here is um, at 12 per minute. Saturation is normal, um, hemodynamic status is good. So the participant now is requested to, um, uh, to uh, clean the, the, the mouth using a little suction. Then he's gonna have to deflate the cuff and perform the extubation which is sometimes 
card on the mannequin. <laughs> Excellent. And then the next step is to apply some oxygen to the patient using the non rebreather mask. And all these steps are explained on the protocol here. So now the final step of the procedure is just to look after uh, the patient after the surgery. So he's been successfully anesthetized and operated on Mars and uh, the simulator software uh, has been really helpful in, in uh, helping us um, evaluate the occurrence of any kind of severe complication that could have happened during this simulation.